In this assessment, we're asked to predict or identify the structure of a molecule given the mass spectrum and the IR spectrum. Now, let me let you in on a secret. Using this light board with things projected, it's really hard with that sort of meteorology green screen effect. So I'm gonna do my best. We're all friends. I hope you'll forgive that this one might be a little bit choppy. Uh, I, I should point out, it's also, this one is also solved in the book. So if you wanna read along the words and um, you might wanna check it out there as well. But um, I'm apologizing in advance for this video. May not be perfect, but what the heck, we're friends. Uh, so let's start with the mass spectrum. And I've gone ahead and identified uh, three important fragments at 106, 91, and 78 all three of which have an M plus two, an M to M plus two in a three to one ratio. What that tells us is that there's a chlorine in the molecule and there's a chlorine in each of these fragments. So let's write down over here on the right, the things that we know. We know we have a chlorine. The other thing we know with an M and M plus two of 106, we know that the atomic mass of the molecule is 106 atomic mass units. So when we get around to proposing a molecular formula, we're gonna do it based on that. For now, that's the extent of the information that we get in the mass spectrum. Well, what does the IR tell us? We know that IR is really only gonna give us information about functional groups, and the key band here is this one at 1800. So 1800 is in that region where we would expect a carbonyl, but not a ketone or an ester or an aldehyde. Being that high really is indicative of having an acid chloride. Now, would we know always that 1800 means acid chloride? Probably not, but remember the mass spectrum told us there's a chlorine. So having this really high carbonyl band allows us to believe that this molecule contains an acid chloride. The rest of what the, the IR spectrum tells us is what's not there, right? We don't see an alkene around 1600. We don't see a CH band around 3100. So, so we kind of believe that the rest of the molecule is fully saturated. There's nothing in the IR to indicate the presence of an aromatic ring. So we have the rest of the molecule is fully saturated. So we'll write that down as something else we know, fully saturated in the remainder of the molecule. Now, here's where we can start to use some logic uh, that, that could be chemistry logic, but it could just be just logic, logic, uh, whatever that is. Uh, to start, this acid chloride functional group, COCl, its atomic mass is going to be 63 atomic mass units. We said that the original molecule contains 106, and this functional group alone contains 63. If we subtract those, we get a remainder of 43 atomic mass units. How does that help us? Well, that helps us because now we're simplifying. We're starting off like, what's this molecule? It could be anything. Well, if it has an acid chloride, and we get lots of evidence that it should, then all we need to account for is the remaining 43 atomic mass units. And so we can do that math of assuming only carbons and hydrogens and assuming that there's no unsaturation. The only way to make 43 with just carbon and hydrogens is to have three carbons for a total of 36 atomic mass units and seven hydrogens for a total of seven atomic mass units. Add those up and we get 43 atomic mass units. And so we can, the other piece of the molecule that we have present is this three C3H7 group. Now C3H7 attached to this acid chloride really only gives us two possibilities. We'll come over here. Here's our C3H7, one, two, three, and then I'll draw in the acid chloride or we could have it attached as if it's an isopropyl, so C3H7 and acid chloride. How will we distinguish 
between those. Well, for that, we have to look more closely at the mass spectrum, specifically the fragmentations. Now, if you look at the mass spec, you'll notice, and it's again, it's hard for me to point, but we go from 106 to 91. That's a loss of 15. So we know that we're going to lose a methyl group, but both of these have a methyl group that we could potentially lose, so we're not gaining as much information from that. The other one, going from 106 to 78, though that's the loss of an ethyl group, right? Can this molecule here lose an ethyl group? It can't. And so this must be the molecule. Now, because we might be curious, how is it going to lose its ethyl group? Well, that can happen, and I'm going to worry that I'm going to, this beautiful video is going to be ruined by running out of space that ethyl group is going to be lost in the McClafferty rearrangement. So sketching it here, this goes there, that goes there, that goes here to make this molecule plus that ethyl radical, the, the ethylene. So losing that ethyl group because this one is the only one that had that 43 atomic mass unit, that C3H7, attached to the acid chloride, it's the only one that can lose an ethyl group. That must be the answer here. Again, if, you, if you're not sure what's going on, if this, if this didn't work, uh, check out the solved assessment in the textbook as well.